I have one for a friend of mine that is really struggling. And uh, I had prayer with him just before I got here, so that's part of why I forgot my microphone, Robert. Oh, that's I why. I was busy in a phone call. And I, just, I wasn't <laughs> thinking clearly. I should have brought all my stuff. I brought it up. about that friend of yours that used to come over there to the church once a month? You know what I'm talking about? The older John. We pray for a lot. Mm -hmm. I can't think of his name right now. It makes me so mad. He always set up in the balcony. He wouldn't come down with us. Oh, I visited him yesterday. How's he doing? He's doing okay. He's he's actually got a, a, a challenge. He's got a blood clot in his leg. Mm -hmm. So they're watching that. And they're doing some blood thinners on him. Did he have the COVID shot? He did. hope it's not from that. So I think he was having trouble before. Yeah, because his leg would just swell up on him. So. We pray for my daughter Trista. Did you pray for her? Yes. She home now? 
Joe in the hospital? Oh, she is. Oh, she had a, uh, she had, uh, oh, what was it, Tuesday? Tuesday, I think, and they found uh, a couple of spots at her lung. So, concerning. Plus, uh, the kidneys. Well, we'll definitely uh, go see her. See, she was supposed to come home, I thought, Sabbath, but then he said yeah. that she couldn't come Sabbath. Yeah. I figured she'd be home now. That's, that's what I was here. So oh, that's oh, different. Yeah. You know, there's just no, there's no end of what we can pray for. Maybe we need to get ourselves a little journal here on Wednesday night. I had yeah. one in my other, I should put it back in here. We can, we can pray over the names in that book and just keep adding and adding and adding. We serve a good God. He answers prayer. And, uh, you know, we live in an upside-down world. Times we're living in are interesting ones. And people struggle in their faith. People struggle in their addictions. People struggle in their health. And so, a little well, shortage yeah. of things to pray for. So, all right, well, let's, uh, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Kind of trouble, Pastor, can get into it here. Kind of loving Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for your love and watch care over each one of us. You have heard the names of several individuals. And you know their situations, whether it's a health struggle or a, a faith struggle or an addiction struggle. Uh, Lord, we just we just live in a time that, that that we can't afford to be without you can't afford to be away from you. We study tonight uh, about your sanctuary, your festivals. We pray for a Holy Spirit to join us. Lord, we're thankful. We're praise-minded here. We have so much to be thankful for. I want to thank you for a fellowship hall here where we could, we could hold a luncheon for a, a family that's hurting from loss. We're thankful that we can meet here week by week praise your name. Uh, Lord, we're just thankful for the many, many things like vacations and, and reconnecting with family. But Lord, also help us to heal our hurts. And, uh, Lord, uh, be there with our sorrow uh, that we might uh, look uh, for brighter days ahead when you come. We pray that it will be soon. Lord, uh, be with us tonight as we study. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'm going to step a little closer here since we're not going that direction here tonight. Well, I heard you guys were on page 9 or just finished with page 9. Yeah, we're starting to camp in college. I just got to where my note was. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're starting right here. We finished the question, the last question. Last, on the other side. last question on which page? Nine. Well, nice. So you're ready for page ten? Yeah, on the okay. court. Is that what you finished, Bob? Yeah, I was just yeah. going to do a little review, maybe, get us going. Okay, you're ready for the court. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, uh, you know, this uh, calendar, when you talk about uh, judgment, some people fear that. Uh, if, we have, if we are in Christ, is in us. Do we need to fear the judgment? No. Um, I like how he knows the inside. Amen. He knows the he knows the inner man. And he knows what we're we're trying to do. Um, in Hebrews chapter four it says that uh, the word of God you know cuts to the bone of the marrow. And it knows the intent of the heart. 
love that scripture because he says he knows why we do what we do. He knows why I struggle. He knows why I'm having a hard time. He knows why I'm drawn to him. And so he knows the intent of our heart, what we're trying to do. And he takes that into account. think of uh, uh, there's going to be people in the, in the end time when Jesus comes and they'll uh, the lesson points out that they'll say Lord, Lord, you know, haven't we done all this? And, and of course what does he say? Never do you. Turn away. And so it kind of uh, denotes that there's a relationship element that we meet with our Lord. We can go through the motions of being a Christian. We can go through the church attendance. And we can have our name on the books. And we can do everything that we think we're supposed to be doing. And yet, we can say, Lord, Lord, since I didn't know you. Because our, our motivation is, is misplaced. Every time I hear that story, I think of one of the pastors that we had here been a pastor for years. He grew up in the church. Um, he was an Adventist all his life. He said he never knew the Lord until he came to Rapid City, South Dakota. Never knew until he went down on the Indian Reservation, preached down there, came back. He said, I, he stood up in front of the congregation and gave a sermon on I found the Lord last week. He had been a minister for years. I believe that. You know, there's, there's a, there's a never forgetting. There's a conversion experience that we need to have yeah. that changes everything. And uh, some people say that it's really easy. Other people say that it's really hard. Um, but I think that uh, there's providence when we have an opportunity in the Lord. And I think it's what we do with that opportunity to know him and what we'll be judged on. Well, we're ready for the court here. And so a little bit of a review going on, as uh, Bob was saying. Uh, in the courtyard, according to Leviticus 16.7, the scapegoat ceremony took place in the court at the entrance to the holy place. Now, if you remember your, your, your diagram of the of the uh, sanctuary complex there. There's the outer courtyard, right? Yeah. And, and at the gate, is there's where the sinner brought his, his sacrifice. Right? So there's the things that took place in, in the courtyard. Uh, the altar of sacrifice was there. The labor was in the courtyard. And of course, those uh, parallel parts of Jesus' ministry that took place on this earth. So the scapegoat ceremony took place at the court at the entrance to the holy place. Uh, Leviticus 16 provides a description of the scapegoat ceremony. And people often ask the question, how can something as pure as heaven have a record of sin? I've actually had discussions with pastors of other faith. And they, they say, you Adventists, you think that there's all these records of your sin in heaven. I said, that's not what Adventists think, that's what the Bible teaches. Adventists just happen to go by what the Bible teaches. Um, and, and they'll, they'll share a scripture of your, my sins are at the bottom of the sea. And I said, and God forgives, but it, it goes into the sanctuary. That forgiveness is provided um, uh, immediately. When is the sinner forgiven? When he asks comes to the Lord. When he brings the sacrament, he brings Jesus, and he accepts Jesus as a sacrifice. It's, it's the forgiveness has already happened. But it's that record of sin. That, and this is God's way of doing it. He says, he says that sin um, goes into the holy place. That record of it. And he says, at the end of time, on judgment day, all that will be as far as the sinner goes, when was he forgiven? When he asked him. Yeah. And 
and so it doesn't it doesn't uh, forego or preclude a judgment just because I've been forgiven. Uh, my Bible tells me that how many people have to appear before the judgment seat of Christ? Every person on earth. Even though I've been forgiven. And so the sanctuary teaches us what, what the whole thing is about. And so it's this, it's this substitutionary atonement. Jesus died for me. He died in my place. Otherwise, I'd have to pay the penalty for my sin. I did the sin. I should pay the penalty, shouldn't I? Yeah. But in God's economy, he says, no, I'll pay the price. And he did that. And my Bible says once for who? All. Oh. For all. all. Now, if he died for everybody, shouldn't everybody be forgiven? Not unless they ask and come to him. They want to so the there. provision is there. The sacrifice is there. But not everybody claims the promises and claims the forgiveness that's, that's offered. And that's why the forgiveness covers the sins that are in the sanctuary. If that makes sense to you. Okay? Well, that's where the prayers go. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's, it's just, it's the best it's the best model that God could come up with to explain salvation the best he could to our finite human minds. So uh, the best way we can answer the question of is why is there a record of sin in heaven? Well, the best way to answer the question is by asking another. It says, how could Jesus bear the sins of the world on his body if he was holy? Sin does not belong to Jesus or to the sanctuary. Sin was imputed to them until it could be imputed to the one who is truly responsible. Who is responsible for all the sins? Satan. He was the instigator, initiator. He's the, he's the responsible party. He's the, he's the guilty one. And, uh, and so the sanctuary and the scapegoat uh, ceremony, this judgment, it shows where the responsibility lies. Now, don't misunderstand who died for your sins and mine. Jesus. That's right, not the devil. No. Nope. Who's responsible for your sin? Jesus? No. Satan. And that's what this is, that scapegoat ceremony is pointing at. And so all the responsibility for all of this woe is going to be placed on the person that should be. Right? Jesus died for it. Right? Yes. But but the, the devil is responsible for it. And that's what it's trying to, to, to point out. So it's important to realize that Jesus only placed forgiven sins on the scapegoat. The sins that made it into the sanctuary are the sins that were confessed. It's the sins that we've been forgiven of already. Those all get placed on the devil. Do you think the devil wants that? No. Does he want to? Does he want to? Does he want to suffer the consequence no, for? I don't think so. <laughs> no. And so he has a vested interest in in having everybody lost. He'll he'll end up paying for his own actions. But imagine. Uh, being held responsible for the actions of others that he caused. Um, you know, we have, you know, we can, we as human beings, we can, we can comprehend this because we, we've, we've all seen trials or heard of trials where, where um, uh, somebody said, uh, you know, I didn't commit the murder or the robbery, but uh, you know, I, I drove the car and I. Had him stay at my house. But that's something else that we've got to remember too, that we're going to be held responsible for our acts on other people. You know. And so uh, the best thing for you and me is to have them forgiven. Amen. And 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 
think, think of this. We're serving a God who is willing to forgive us when we don't even deserve it. But we have to have that relationship with him. Okay, and, and, so, and so think of somebody that has no Savior. The state that they're in, that they bear all their guilt. And, and some people cover their guilt up and their and, and things with different things in their life. They try to fill that void. Um, they try to uh, assuage that guilt. Uh, they rationalize it. Some people rationalize. Some people go crazy. Some people will, will turn to uh, mind numbing, mind altering things so that their attitude, they can live with what they've done. I, I, I came across uh, a family that uh, the dad had done some terrible things to the daughter. And uh, he just kind of wanted to sweep it under the rug and forget about it. It was a long time ago. And uh, of course, one of the daughters said, how do, you, how do you do that? What made it worse is that, is that the, the dad never owned up to it. You know, never saw it. Never saw it help. Never uh, did you just That person's going to have to live with that. And and the, the heavy burden for the for let's say the daughters, the family members. What does God say about forgiveness? And so we live in a world that is so messed up. That it's like, how can you forgive somebody for something that egregious? But the alternative is to not to forgive. You can forgive them, but there's a lot of things that can't be forgotten. Correct. Well, for your own health. Yeah. I mean, it's for your own health to forgive. Yeah. And if you give it to God, God helps you forgive those people. Yeah. He, don't. He, he shows you a different side how to love that person even though they're not very deserving of it. <laughs> sure. Yeah. I, you know, and, and, and so some people are really easy for us to just write off and say that is unforgivable. But there's no sin that's unforgivable to God except grieving the Holy Spirit. And so, and so there's a there's a grace that forgives, but there's a, a, a grace that, that enables us to overcome. But but there has to be the uh, what does it say in uh, First John? If we are faithful and just, or, or if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us. But I uh, my my part of it is I have to confess it. And that sin, the record of that sin goes into the sanctuary and it gets put on who? Christ. So it gets, well, Christ paid it. It By gets put us, on the scapegoat. It put, puts on the scapegoat because he's the one that's responsible for how I behaved ultimately. I made the choice, but, but he caused it. He tempted. He manipulated. He did everything. He pushed all my buttons. I had a discussion earlier today with somebody that uh, really struggling. They need to read uh, today's well today's lesson for me, but it's three lessons ahead. The Sabbath school. Yeah, because that it takes care of that. But it's a it's a it's a frame of mind, isn't it? That it's an attitude towards a heavenly Father that we're able to approach a Savior that that we understand gave His all for us, mm -hmm. and it's out of, uh, of an un.
unending, eternal, and, and there's, there's no holds barred love that he has. And so that's what the that's what's at stake here. It's like he says, I've he says, I've loved you with an everlasting love. I've given you everything. I've given everything I could. The Bible says he emptied himself out. And he took on everything that you and I deserve. He took it on himself. And so what's at stake is, is that our, our comprehending that. You know, at some point we have to graduate beyond, uh, you know, I read a Bible verse today at the, at, the, at the funeral. I said, God is not willing that anyone should perish. Death is not part of his plan. In fact, death is the last enemy to be defeated. Death was introduced at the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That lack of trust. And so what's at stake is our relationship if we can't trust God, if we can't um, you know, be real with God. And not just say, well, I don't really have that big a problem. At least my problem is not like Elaine's. You know, I can, you know, I can deal with my guilt, but I don't know how she deals with hers. I mean, we can't have that attitude because, because every one of us um, risks eternity by us clinging to the smallest of things. We have to surrender. Uh, mostly, right? You got to, I mean, Christ, yeah, we, have we have to surrender, to surrender all to Him. We have to, everything, we, we have, have to give it all. Because He gave it all. And He knows it all. So you can't fool Him. Yeah. So, so why do I keep struggling? What's the matter with me? It's the devil. Yeah. And so now we know why he has to be held responsible. Yeah. Because he's relentless. Mm -hmm. And he kicks me when I'm down. And like I said, he pushes all the right buttons. He knows my weakness. But you know who else knows my weakness? God. And he is able to keep us from falling. Mm -hmm. What a what a beautiful God. But we have work to do. It was like in the lesson this morning. It said every time you have a temptation, God puts three things in your mind to keep you away from that temptation. You have to disobey all those before Satan can get in there and take all of them. You do it. Yeah. Morris, Morris Bennett had a book that was called Hard to Be Lost. Yeah. <laughs> I read that <laughs> excellent book because he says you have to really jump through the hoops in order to be lost because God's done so much to save you. And so you have to ignore all these things and put aside all these things and make a conscious choice not to do. But isn't it sad, isn't it a tragedy that uh, you know, this group here I don't think there's a one of us that don't know how much God loves us. But as a pastor, I can tell you, I, I meet a lot of people throughout the course of a week, a month, a year. I have no clue how much God knows them. And some of them have been in the church their whole life. I know. That's just like the pastor that I was talking about. We just so, tear it through together. Yep. So 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 what are what are we doing doing wrong? Why are you know what's what's our issue that People don't know because we don't we don't communicate with each other in, this, in the church. So I think this is as much as communication that we get is right here on. You know, like on, like on a Sabbath morning in a Sabbath school class, there's a little bit of discussion there, but sometimes. We, but we don't have the closeness that we, we with the group that we have out here. We don't have the closeness, and we don't have that fellowship that we used to have. How do we get there? Well, it's a personal thing. Yeah, it's a personal thing, but you have to have a personal relationship with God before you can share it. But and, we need to. Yeah, uh, but it's it's a common journey for every one of us, though, right? Yeah. We, you know, we're hopefully all headed in the same direction, right? Towards so. towards Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, my Bible tells me that He He comes running after me 
when I turn towards him, he comes running after me. But you even see it in the children in this church. They don't have that, I don't know what I want to say, they don't have that lock of friendship that, that a kid used to have. It, it's a it's a different time, yeah. but that's not an excuse. I think the devil uses certain things to his advantage. I think Boy, he's I used know. COVID to his advantage. Oh, amen to that. Uh, he has used uh, uh, technology to his advantage. Uh, but can God use COVID to open things up for people that have never yes. been exposed? Yes, he can uh, use anything. Robert, you pay attention to all the, the different people that that look at the Facebook posts that we do week by week. Every so often there's somebody that's never been on there. Yeah. Somebody's yeah. running across it. There's a lot of them that are, at, half of them are Adventists that watch yeah. the, the worship service. They're, that's neat. Yeah. And so, and so we, we, it's not that we're not doing anything. It's just that, that we're probably not doing everything. Well, I heard a, I was on a webinar last night and heard that a lot of times people don't know what to do as far as um, talking to other people. But he said that God put you on this earth. It wasn't an accident. It was on purpose. He said, you're the only one, whatever city you're in, certain number of people in this city, you're the only one that can help them. And I think we need to get that message across, is you are needed. God does work in you to help someone. And it's, a, and it's our willingness to be used. Well, when we were in Brian Center, at the Branton Church, it's a smaller church, probably like Spearfish, maybe a little bigger. But every Sabbath we'd have visitors from all over. You know, because everyone church comes down. to Branson, right? And so we would get up and go introduce ourselves to everybody. And there was this 86-year-old lady that kind of run the church. Not really. I think she was one of them. She was a matriarch. She <laughs> would make sure everybody felt welcome. She would go introduce herself get a little history from them, you know, in, in the announcement she would welcome everyone, and so those kind of things I think we lack here. Like, and there's no, there's, but there's no reason any, any of us couldn't do that. Right. We're all guilty. Sometimes I, mean, I remember uh, Doris and Les used to do that. They used to go, I don't care who they were, they went to everybody in the church. And, now, Barb does it on communion day. That's the only time Barb does it. When I did Sabbath school, I would gather everybody together in a circle, and we would all pray, and everyone would take turns praying. Now you didn't have to if you didn't want to, but there was never anybody who didn't pray. <laughs> yeah, that's the way we used to do it all the time. Down and you get to Kansas know each other that way, because people pray about what's on their heart. Yeah. And, and so then after church, you have something to you know maybe talk about. And then sometimes during church service, we would stop and everyone turn around to your neighbor behind you or in front, shake hands, introduce yourself if you know you didn't already know, or just say hi. So, well, we used to I, do I, that too. Yeah, we need to act more like a family. Yeah. Than, than, uh, than an acquaintance. There's yeah. so many people in the church we don't even know their names. I mean, what's, me and Bob go. Where are those people what's over there? The admonition that we have is to bear one another. I, how do I know your burdens unless? Well, you don't because we don't visit back and forth. I can I can I can give you the twenty questions and find out what your burdens are, or or I can I can uh, be approachable and and genuine and real and and have that loving spirit that you would feel comfortable saying, you know what, I can confide in that. Person. Well, you know, another thing is a lot of people they don't know how to pray and. One thing that we had on Wednesday night was we used to always until, well, we didn't do it with you and we didn't do it with Pastor Clements. But up until then, 
everybody took turns praying on Wednesday night. It wasn't left to the pastor or the, uh, but we used to have big prayer meetings too. Um, but everybody took their turns praying. You know, it wasn't left up to a, an elder, uh, like, well, Tom Fisher and I and Shirley used to, if the pastor wasn't there, one of the three of us took the lesson. We never, we always had Wednesday night prayer meeting, and we took the initiative, and everybody in the group prayed. But we don't do any of those things. Pastor Clarence kind of put a stop to a lot of the stuff that we did. Well, there's no reason we can't have a prayer meeting. Yeah, well, that's what we used to, we used to have prayer meetings, and everybody would say what was on their, you know, we had. I think that's kind of what the prayer warriors do. I don't know because I've never been to a prayer warrior meeting, so I don't know what they, they do. Lift, they lift up the list of people on the, in the bulletin, and then whatever else is on their hearts. But they, I know that they started out with a book on prayer. Mm -hmm. What well, until we all go around and each one of us pray? Because I've never been in prayer warriors. Yeah, that's a prayer warrior. That's, yeah, because we have the list, and then we have whatever else has come in. And we discuss the list. And but that needs to be, people need to be asked to join that. That we, because they, they were never asked, and when you would go, I was told by what, well, she's no longer here, and she's not. Well, you had to be asked. You couldn't just go to the prayer warriors. That's why people don't go to it. Well, Maisie and Bev are the only ones that are in prayer warriors now. Yeah, and, then, and that's the reason. Well, but since... Because when Lou Earl had it, we, weren't, we had to be asked to join. Well, since Lou Ann and I have been going, we have asked people to come. Because Scott's part of it, and Bill's been sitting in on it. Oh, that's good. So yeah, no, you know the prayer. You know we had the forty days of prayer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd like to see some more participation there, but you know it was really meaningful and impactful for those who went through. Uh, we don't have to end there, do we? Mm -hmm. I I think I think uh, you know especially in the day in which we're living and knowing that Jesus is coming soon. Uh, we need to be more deliberate in, in what we're doing. Um, so we got uh, uh, Jesus bearing our sins and Satan being responsible for those. So that's what the sanctuary teaches. Uh, it's important for us to realize that Jesus only place forgiven forgiven sins on the scapegoat. The scapegoat did not forgive the sins of Israel. They were already forgiven. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then those forgiven sins, responsibility for those is placed on the scapegoat. Michelle, you asked a question last week. Why don't you ask it again? About the scapegoat. <laughs> I found the place that I was looking for. How did they keep the scapegoat from coming back to the camp? Um, it was it was taken to, and it's my understanding that you know that it was an able-bodied man because he had to go to a place that even a goat would not come back from. He was led into the into the desert, but he was led into. A high place. Some versions say a fit. Yeah. Yeah. So it was. He could be spiritually fit. But, but I think it was. I think it was somebody who could make the arduous climb, up. climb yeah. and they go. The go. <coughs> uh, I mean, I was thinking about the desert as flat. <laughs> no, no, it's it's and it and. Uh, See uh, that the the the. Some traditions say that it was to a high place, and the expectation was that that fit man would say, you're not coming back down, yeah. you're going over. See, and that, I've got that book on the sanctuary that it's written by a man it's, uh, that had, you know, the sanctuary that the kids used to do from the churches and stuff. They'd travel and they set up the sanctuary, oh, okay. life-size. Well, there were, they wrote a book on it. And he, in that book, it says that they tied the that they tied the scapegoat to a tree, you know, or some kind of bush or something. If 
it started to follow them back down. Yeah, it, it was it was a place that, that there was no expectation <clears throat> of him coming coming back. And uh, and I think the fit man had to stay until kind of like uh, until the reference that I could find it was he, he he met his end. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was the expectation. So there was no food or water or anything where they took him. No, that's right. Uh, and, and my understanding would be to a, a, a prep, a high place that the goat would more than likely just go over and, and perish. Like a gap where it fell. It, it would not be able to. It's not as sure-footed as a mountain goat. You know, goat's not a can't get some places. But, uh, I've seen what top yeah. cars. Oh. Yeah, I've seen them too. But this was, that's why I say it had to be a fit man. It had right. to be a, uh, somebody. Uh, a little bit of Adventist history here. Desmond Ford claimed that the Day of Atonement took place at the cross because sacrifices were offered on the Day of Atonement. Um, atonement took place at the cross. The atonement is different than the day of atonement. The scapegoat ceremony was the day of atonement, okay? The atonement at one moment happened at the cross. But the day of atonement ceremony was a separate mm -hmm. deal. Um, if you would look at the festivals, and we'll, and we'll get to this, um, the first festival is what? Hebrew calendar. Yes? Passover. Passover. What happened at the Passover? The blood was put on the doorposts and the angel of death. How did the blood get there? You had to paint it on the doorsteps. Okay. And where did that blood come from? The lamb, or okay. yeah, yeah, the lamb so. had to die. Yeah. And so the Passover is where Jesus died. Right. The atonement, but it's not the day of atonement, it's the Passover, it's the very beginning. The day of atonement towards the very end. So it, it's talking about two different things, but, but it's the same blood, right, that gets applied. It's all the, it's all the same. It's Jesus all the way through. If you haven't figured that out yet, the sanctuary is Jesus, 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 Jesus. Right. All the festivals are Jesus, 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 Jesus. And, and, and it's all about reconciliation. It's all about forgiveness. It's all about cleansing. It's all about um, uh, just reuniting with a, with a God that we've been separated because of sin. It's it's how God deals with the sin problem, and and the, the solution to sin is Jesus Christ. Okay, for my forgiveness and for my living a new life. There's no other name by which we are saved. There's there's nothing. And so no we look or. So uh, he, he, he points out here that it's true that the sacrificial aspect of the Day of Atonement took place at the cross, but this does not mean the entire Day of Atonement ritual was fulfilled at the cross. It just wasn't. If, if everything was done, did, what, what are some of the words that Jesus said on the cross? What did he say at the end? It is done. And what are we doing here? If it's all done, what are we doing here? Struggling, fussing. Was it all done, or was there was was that part of his yeah, his ministry? His ministry. Was done. So so we can we can work this out. It's not rocket science, okay? So his sacrifice was complete. He only had to die once for or all. all. Okay, now there's some there are some religious ceremonies. Still, within Christianity, where Jesus is sacrificed every single day. The Bible tells me he died once for all. And that was enough, right? Yes. Okay. And so that's where that happened. And it, and it was enough for you and me. It was enough for everybody. It was enough for everybody that's ever lived. But not 
everybody wants to follow Jesus into the sanctuary. It's one thing to be forgiven of my sin. It's another thing for me to have sin purged out of my life. And so we struggle today, right? Every one of us in this room needs to have sin purged out of our life. Doesn't mean that the forgiveness isn't good. It just means that I have not applied the sacrifice in every corner of my life. On this side post of my heart, on the lintel of my heart, on that side post of my heart, on the threshold of my heart. And look at the symbology. The blood of Christ here, 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 and here. It was not enough for them to say, here's the sacrifice of the blood. He says, you need to apply it. And, and the door was symbolic of the door, of the, heart, the door to our hearts. <clears throat> it was an out it was kind of an outward showing of what's going on you know, on the inside. inside. It's not a perfect analogy, is it? No. But it's a, it's the best God could come up with, and I think he's a pretty good God, and I think he's pretty smart. But we can we can make the connection if we will. Yeah. Um, interesting about that sacrifice, and we'll talk about it later, but, you know, on that Passover, they had to go out three days ahead of time and pick the lamb. It, had to be perfect. it wasn't just like, oh, Passover's almost here, we better go find us a lamb. Mm -hmm. Ahead of time, he was cho chosen. Could that be because Christ was chosen from the foundation of the world? And he was a lamb without blemish, without spot. And of course they killed that lamb and shed his blood. And, and the indications are is that that lamb was sacrificed on the threshold. At the doorway. Just like the sanctuary. And it couldn't have any broken bones when they cooked it. And how much of it did they have to eat? All of it. Every ounce of it except the bones. And so you need all of Jesus. All his teaching. Not just his fun. All of it. And I need to, to, to assimilate him. I need to take him in. So highly symbolic. That's the best God could do for us. Find that human being. We can get it. We can get it. Okay, so um, the entire Day of Atonement ritual was not fulfilled at the cross, but it was to be applied at the very end. That's why the scapegoat comes in at the end. So there's the Passover, uh, unleavened bread, first fruits, uh, uh, Pentecost, or the Feast of Weeks, and then you have the trumpets. Right? And then you had the Day of Atonement. And then at the day, after the Day of Atonement was Tabernacles, tabernacles where we are with Jesus. God again. We are living in the antitypical Day of Atonement right now. The judgment is going on, is going on right now. Mm -hmm. And will it go on forever and ever and ever? No. Nope. Is it going to end at some point? Soon, I hope. The Bible says it will. And when it does, that's when Jesus will come and we will tabernacle with him. Amen. And so that's that's what we're looking forward to. These these festivals and rituals are very ripe with me. Um, sacrifices were also offered on the day of Pentecost. But so does that mean that the day of Pentecost was fulfilled at the cross? See, all these festivals have sacrifices. But it doesn't mean that they're all fulfilled at the cross. They're stages of Christ's ministry for you and me. So the Passover is the cross. The labor is his resurrection. Right? The holy place is the is the changing out of the showbread and the lighting of the lampstand, the burning of the incense. It's his daily ministration for you and me. Okay? Let me ask you this. When we get to heaven, um, 
are we still going to be confessing sins and and mm. Jesus going to be working in the temple mm -hmm. up, mm -hmm. up there no. that says there is no more temple. No, he is the temple. And there's a there's a shift that happens, and so this temple, of which was a a, a, a plan, a, a, a model was made for Moses so that he could set it up down here. We had the model down here. The real thing was where in heaven. In the, in the whole so room. we had earthly priests, but my Bible says there was a better priest. Who's that? The heavenly yeah. priest Christ. Down here we sacrifice lambs. The Bible says in Hebrews that there's a better sacrifice. Who is that? Christ. Oh, Christ. So better priest, better sacrifices, better temple, better promises. If you read Hebrews, look for the word better. Okay. Everything's better because it's the real deal. And uh, you know, so we we base we base our, our, our faith and our trust off of promises. That I ask for forgiveness on my knees. What, what am I trusting in? If I confess my sins. God's forgiveness. If God's faithful and forgiven. He says he's faithful. He's faithful and just. Yeah. Even though, right, judgment for me hasn't happened yet. He can say, I can forgive you. I don't have to wait till no. the day of atonement. Oh, it'll, it'll all be complete. That forgiveness, whole, whole thing. But right now, I promise you, and, it, and it's, a, it's a done deal. But the effectualness, um, and so Paul, Paul says, um, I think it's in Romans, where he says, he says, everything I know I shouldn't do, I do, <laughs> and everything I know, and everything I, I, I know I should do, I don't. <laughs> That's Paul. I don't. And then he says, when will we be delivered from this body of sin? The answer, of course, is when I die, I'll quit sinning the day I die. <laughs> or the day Jesus comes. Amen. And there, there is that, that brief moment in time when he is working and interceding for me. And there's that, that, that close of probation that happens. And the Bible talks about this. Is that him who is righteous be righteous still. Let him who is filthy be filthy still. There's a point in time where he says, I've seen everybody's cases. I know their hearts. The forgiveness has been applied, right? Previously for those that's been promised. For those who don't want it, don't have to have it. And and the, and the choices are made. He says, um, uh, you know, Probation is closed. There's no more time. And he stands up and once again says, it's finished. it's finished. And then he takes off his priestly robes, puts on his kingly robes, and comes for you and me. And I just, that's just, to me, that's exciting. And that's exciting. Can't wait. And so as we review a little bit about the different uh, facets of, of the ministry, you know, we didn't quite make it through, but we probably get a little bit further. We'll get up to the camp. Let's get up to the camp. I was going to say, yeah, the camp let's, is the stop. last. That yeah, little yeah. page, there's only one question on it. And we're yeah, done let's, with that. Let's, let's get through that. <clears throat> so, now, I want you to be very clear. The scapegoat <clears throat> did not forgive sins. I don't know. It's been several times with other ministers or other faiths. You Adventists think that the devil forgives your sins. Where well, are you getting this? We don't teach that. The, the, the sins that are in the sanctuary, the sins that have been forgiven, right? Past tense, they've already been forgiven. The responsibility for those goes where? Scapegoat. They go along the scapegoat. That's yeah. what the Bible teaches. How could people think that the devil forgives sins when he's the master of sins? Scapegoat. 
don't Well, they, do they, um, for some people, it's very difficult for them to imagine that in heaven is a record of sin. If you read Revelation, how are the people, how are the wicked judged after they're resurrected? Through the book of life. And the what books? I thought there was no record of anything. There's three books. There's the book of life, right? Mm -hmm. And there's the book of good and evil, right? And then our, our book of our deeds. Yeah. Uh, Jesus said every idle word Every idle Every word that idle thought. Yes, bothered me for years. And, no and, what and you so say to and somebody. so and so you you're starting to see when <laughs> when the, when when that passage in Hebrews four talks about it, the, the word of God cuts to the marrow and it divides down to the smallest part and, and it judges the intent of my heart. The same Bible tells me that my heart is deceitful above all things, and who can know it? Well, who knows my heart? Christ. The living word. Yeah. And so when I'm reading the Bible, all of a sudden something percolates and say, like, oh, mm -hmm. I'm doing this wrong. Great soul that I am, who will deliver me? Mm -hmm. And, and there, is there an answer to that? Yes. Yeah. Right. Come I to agree. me, all you who yeah. labor. You've already been forgiven. You just have to accept it. So will our idle words and idle deeds or whatever be wiped out too? <laughs> yeah. If, 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 we if well, and, and here's the thing. I get, this I, get, I, get, I, get, I get this question all the time. <laughs> our sins are either covered by the blood of Christ or, or, or they're not. In your record book, in my record book, we come to Jesus and we're, and we're uh, honest with ourselves and not pretentious or um, like the Pharisee that was praying, oh Lord I'm glad I'm not like that guy you know I have little problems he's got big ones you know and Jesus says one of them went away for you a lady and so, so when we when we come to the Lord, we want to we want to put it all out there. And and I think the, the Holy Spirit will either bring things to our mind, or God knows the intent of our hearts. What we're trying to do, if we're trying to to, to, to give it all to Him, you think He takes that into account? Yes. And look at look at how 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 good His grace is. Um, there will be people in heaven that will have no idea I don't say how they got there but he is looking for how we treat each other that's the big hurdle but why would I treat you with love and respect you know we were if, talking if about you're that. just if you're just something for me to step on and use and we were talking about that Sabbath in Sabbath school and that colored boy I can't think of his name wife's going to have a baby. Um, he said that he learned that. He didn't learn it from anybody in the church. He learned it from a realtor. He called a realtor in Sioux Falls and told him that he needed a place to stay. Until, and the realtor says, I'll let you live in my house. Said, I'll leave the key at such and such. And he had never seen him sight unseen. Didn't know who he was or nothing. And he said that's the first time he really seen love was that we were talking about and, and grace and just From people. It, it's just um, I'm in awe of how he could love a sinner like me he says I loved you while you were still sinners enemies of mine that doesn't make sense to me but I'm glad he does and so, and so he is, and, and here, here's something that even drives it home even more for me, and we'll finish here in just a second. He knew all the choices I was going to make, but he treated me as if I was going to choose him. 
whole time. I wonder what life would be like if we would afford that kind of grace to each other. What kind of world we'd be living in right now. Way better, I think. So in the camp, the millennium, after the millennium, that's a thousand years, the wicked will surround the camp. They'll be destroyed and sin will be eradicated forever. And the tabernacle of God will then be with men. That's the tabernacles. So you can see these feasts popping up here, can't you? And he will dwell with them. He shall be their God and they shall be his people. And the scripture it gives there is Revelation 21, verses 2 and 4. I read this at my funeral this morning. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice. And you know, uh, when we think of a wedding, the, the bride is the one that's all decked out. And, mm -hmm. and, and everything is prepared. And my goodness, you know, sometimes they'll spend hours on their hair. And everything's got to be perfect. And, and so God is making sure everything is perfect for who? For us. For us. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God's with men, and he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. That was a big one this morning. And there shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things had passed away. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah. You know, things will be different when uh, he puts an end to sin. So what we're studying in the sanctuary, what we're studying in the festivals, is God's method of dealing with the sin problem. How does he separate the sin from the sinner? He loves the sinner. And he hates the sin because it's separated. And I, I love that passage because it says, He will dwell with us and we are God. And we'll we dwell with Him. We won't be separated anymore. Ever since man got kicked out of the Garden of Eden, there's been this wall between them. And uh, even the sanctuary says, you know, what, what's the overarching that I've been telling you since we started the sanctuary? <coughs> it's the overarching thing. God let, wants us to be with him. Yeah, let that well be a sanctuary. That I may dwell with him. And so he's been trying to get back with you and me ever since the garden. And he will. And I look forward to that day and hope you do too. Amen. Let's pray. So we're ready for lesson number two next time. Alright. Kind and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your goodness, your grace, and, and that eternal and everlasting love. Uh, Lord, may we reflect you, your character, when it comes to our dealings with each other. Uh, we look forward to the day there will be no more death, no more crying, no more tears, no more sorrow, no more pain, uh, because those former things will have passed away. Uh, Lord, don't make us wait long, but in the meantime, Lord, help us to remain faithful to you. Help us to share the good news with uh, those in our little circles of influence. And Lord, we pray for all those things once again earlier that we mentioned, the people who are in need of a God that loves them. So take us home this evening, and may we uh, come back uh, praising you and loving you more. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The recording has stopped. <laughs> and do you know the room number for Bill? <laughs> <laughs>